Hey everyone, and welcome back to A Millennial Mind. This week, I'm so excited to introduce you all to Amira. She's a part-time model and founder of the incredible app, MyWave, which empowers you to record your thoughts and inspire the world through the power of voice. This week, we speak about authenticity and social media and discuss whether you're really the same person offline as you are online. So let's get into it. Amira, welcome to Millennial Mind. This is my first podcast in the studio. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. Don't be. Don't be? (laughs) But yeah, thank you so much for coming on. We are going to be talking about like a very hot topic, which is social media. Mm -hmm. And actually looking at it from a different lens of, is it changing who we are? So do we have a different identity on social media than we do in person? But let's just start with the nice facts. Let's just talk about how social media is great. I mean, I love it. We wouldn't be having this conversation Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have met you Mm -hmm. if it wasn't for social media. Um, And, you know, some of the stats are just crazy. You know, 1 billion active users on Facebook, 800 million people using Instagram every day, 5 million tweets a day. I mean, I don't even tweet. Yeah, I had a look as well. There's 95 million photos uploaded to Instagram every day. 95 million photos. And then I wonder why sometimes, like, I don't get that many likes. There's 95 million (laughs) photos, and I'm like, why are people not looking at me? It's crazy. Um, But, you know, the purpose of it is to really connect people. The purpose of social media, the reason why these tools were built were to keep in contact with people and to be engaged and to actually just keep up with people's lives. Now, the problem, I think, that we're facing is we're kind of a bit we're keeping up with people's lives a bit too much, right? Mm -hmm. The one thing I really love that we're seeing is that, you know, social media is an incredible vehicle for social change. So what's happening in Ukraine at the moment, so many people are able to, like, raise awareness about what's happening. We're actually seeing what people are going through right there. Mm -hmm. And also we're able to raise money. So we never really had a lot of those things available before social media, but it's very, very much still in its infancy. You know, the internet's only been around for, like, 12 years. Mm-hmm. Like, when I think about that, I just think, what? That's so crazy. I think it's actually Facebook that's only been around for, like, 12 years, which is mad. Really? I think so. Have I got that stat wrong, guys? <laughs> if I have, just comment below and tell me if I've got that stat wrong. But I know it hasn't been long, is basically what I'm saying. But yeah, tell me, how has social media impacted you? I've had an interesting journey with social media, and I think, you know, both of us being millennials. Mm-hmm. But when I look back, I'm very grateful that I actually didn't have social media growing up. Really? Very grateful. Why? I can't imagine how young girls and boys, mm. the pressures that they're feeling right now. Um, you know, we had MSN and Bebo and stuff. And like, that was <laughs> enough. That was enough to deal with. Honestly. I can't imagine, you know, the metrics dealing with the likes, the follows, and, you know, trying to sustain... You know, kids are growing up much quicker these days. Mm. Um, You're so right on that, actually. I remember it took me so long to decide what an MSN email address would be called. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, do you know what my email address was? It was X dash shivs with a Z dash X. Like, I, that's still active. That's, that's my Facebook email. Like, I don't even got it. I, 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 got, I don't know how to deactivate it. I don't know how to move it to my normal email. But when people ask me, I just feel a bit embarrassed and I have to log in on a Facebook account mm-hmm. and it's X dash shivs. That's literally mm-hmm. it at the moment. But I actually felt pressure then to think about what would be cool. So yeah. imagine if we had like all followers and all these things, then how we would feel. So you're so right, actually. I think it would have impacted us in a completely different way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Looking at our age and how we've adapted to it growing up, mm-hmm. um, I've, I've, I've had weird relationships with social media. Being a young woman in my early 20s, um, I don't think I saw the best in it. Um, and like you said, the reason why it was born in the first place, you know, if we make a quick comparison, it's not the same as it as it is now. Mm. Um, and I think my relationship with social media changed and evolved as I grew as a person. So right. when you're younger and you're not as aware, um, you're more vulnerable, um, you care a lot about what other people think, you know, all of these things mm. play a huge role into your experience with social media, I think. So do you not care about what people think now? So we've got 7 million people in the UK have social phobia, right? That's a fear of being judged. And I think... No way. Yeah. And I think that's actually 227 million in the world, 7 million in the UK. And I think everyone has that vulnerability and that insecurity when they're posting something. We Mm -hmm. can't deny it. Um, People are being more vulnerable and more open, which is incredible to see. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think deep down, I probably do have 
a side of me and I did care a lot more when I was younger mm. but again the more that I've learned to love who I am as a person and really embracing who I am the less you care about what other people think but sure. again my mindset now at 28 versus my 18 year old self would not say totally the same thing you know yeah I completely agree I mean I still do I'm very conscious about what I post I think I try and be as like open and vulnerable as I can but it's quite hard when, and I think this never changes, Look, I don't have a big following, and I think that because I don't have a big following, in my head I'm like, well, when I have a big following, I won't care as much. But you have 80,000 followers on Instagram. Do you, do you think that ever goes away? I think my relationship with my audience has, it's been an interesting journey for me because although some people say, oh yeah, you've got some followers, there are pros to that. There's also huge cons. I went through a really tough time with online harassment and bullying really? yeah it got deep and it taught me a lot of lessons and I actually it really made me create a barrier with social media so there's been a, a big period and chunk of my life where I've been kind of not feeling like I can really give myself to mm. social media and I think if I didn't have as many followers and it was just my friends I wouldn't really care so I think subconsciously right. in the back of my mind I was always a little bit worried about you know, getting harassed or bullied mm. online again, but you know, online bullying is a huge thing. You're like the most beautiful person ever. Why on earth would you be bullied online? <laughs> um, I'd, I'd, I'll never know the answer from that person, but mm. um, I can only think and put myself in their shoes, and you know, I should, I should never have brought myself down or gone through yeah. that that really dark time with myself because the issue was never with me. You know, it was yeah, with that course. person, you know, to go out and seek and, you know, proactively make someone feel awful about mm -hmm. themselves. Like, there's obviously something wrong with that. Something wrong, you know, with That's, themselves. like, the only way you can justify someone being horrible to you, isn't it? Because, like, that's the only way I can do it now as well. If someone puts me down or if someone discludes me, and I think that, like, girls feel it a little bit more. You know when you just get a vibe and, mm -hmm. like... Some people, like the guys I speak to about this, don't really get it. I think guys are a bit more like direct. Like if they don't like you, they'll just tell you to your face. I think with some girls, they will make you feel in a certain way, the way they look at you, the way they mm -hmm. speak to you. It's just not direct. And like that energy, I truly believe energy doesn't lie. And so for me, I just feel that in that moment, I just have to justify it of like, you're unhappy and I can't let you bring me down. Mm -hmm. You know, there was an like, amazing quote I posted on Instagram, I can't even remember it exactly, but it was something like, a boat can be in a sea of water, but the boat won't sink unless you let the water get inside of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Have I said it right? I don't think I've said it right. <laughs> I will post that quote. I heard a good quote as well, actually. I don't know if it's... Maybe you'll, maybe you'll remember quotes better than me. Um, <laughs> Mum was like, you could be the juiciest, tastiest peach, peach in, the world. in the world. But someone is going to hate peaches. I love that. And that's that is definitely what I one. learned. And that's the kind of transition I took out of social media. Like, you know, it doesn't matter how hard I would try. Mm. You know, pleasing everyone is just never going to happen, ever. 100% and you know I really want to touch on that point because the one thing I really hate is like someone not being authentic and the one thing I'm really seeing with social media is that people are not doing things for themselves you know if you see someone else posting a picture I don't know in a certain outfit people want to imitate that and start posting in those outfits mm -hmm. or if you see someone going to a particular restaurant or a club or a bar you're like I want to do those things because that's cool we're actually seeing people being a different version of themselves and that's kind of what the topic I want to touch on is that I truly believe in your heart if you do things for you, you won't feel like out of place, you won't feel like an imposter I guess. What we're seeing with social media is so many people are like exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Like people are literally just merging into one person and people are looking the same, people's makeup's the same, people's hair's the same. This is fueled by the trends, right? Exactly. So like whenever there's like one particular trend, people like jump on it and we're actually just being a completely different version of ourselves mm -hmm. to please other people. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what I don't really get. I don't really understand it. And this kind of happened, happened with me with modeling. So the thing is, is that I, st I tried modeling a little bit and I've never really gone into it that much. And I feel that I did really enjoy some of it, but like, I don't really love it. If I'm truly honest, I don't think that it's for me. But I did it because I thought it was cool. I thought people thought it was cool, so I continued to do it. And so sometimes when I didn't want to do some of the shoots, I was like, no, but people think it's cool. And then I would come home and be like, I really didn't enjoy that. And I'd be mm -hmm. like, but why? And it was like, because it's not aligned to me. It's not like aligned to my soul. Mm -hmm. It's not who I am. 
And so like I struggled with that a little bit and I've only kind of like understood that at the moment. So now I'm very clear about what I go for and what I don't and what jobs I want to do and what jobs I don't. But there was one thing that I realized that when I started modeling, I started to see all my peers and they were posting pictures of themselves. And they were posting pictures of themselves in like a particular dress and like in a particular way. And I think I was like, should I be doing that? But it's just not me. I'm not a girly girl. I wish I could be a girl that I could wear cut out dresses and like I don't have big boobs. And it's just not me. So I was like, I'm not going to post that. And I know if I started posting those pictures, I'd get a big following, right? But it's not aligned to who I am. And like, I think that self-awareness has only come with time. Like when I first started modeling, I didn't understand why I'd feel low. I didn't understand why I'd feel upset when I came home. I didn't understand why I felt inadequate. And like, I truly think exactly the quote you said, we're all unique. And so someone may look at you and think, oh, you're not as good looking as this person, but someone may look at you and think you're like the most beautiful person in the world. But when you're modeling, you'll know this because you're a part-time model as well. You compare yourself so much, right? Yeah. And it's so easy to because the makeup artist, the photographer, the casting agent, your agent will constantly be like, well, they've got this person. Have you experienced that? It's a, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse because going through these challenges only made me stronger and wow. made me love myself more. But when you're in it, I feel like a certain expectation has been ingrained in mm. me. You know, shooting every day, professional camera, professional makeup, like looking yes. flawless, going home like, and just not, you know, having that expectation. And again, like modeling full time means I was posting a lot of modeling full time. Exactly. And again, was that the real impression of who I was? You know, people have, you know, first impressions of a model, per right. se, they're very quick to judge. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, being a model, in particularly on Instagram, like there was a huge expectation to have this execution of right. a look, um, being on trend. The angles, the way you're posing, like it's very similar. You'll see it with a lot of girls. And the editing, like people love edited photos. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes a, like a natural photo. Yeah. So that's like, how it was born. I remember when Instagram first came out and everyone was like just sharing just random like moments yeah. and I remember first looking at it, I was like, what is this? Like why would I want to share my pictures? Exactly. Um, but just the authenticity of just capturing those memories was really beautiful. Yeah. And now everything is just so orchestrated and scheduled and post production. Like there's scheduled. just so oh much investment God. in a picture is unbelievable. And like now the trend is to post reels. So like yeah. you just constantly see people posting videos twenty four seven, and sometimes I just think like, what are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you actually doing this for? I I think if you speak to any celebrity or like um, anyone who's kind of famous, they'll say, I'm doing it to help people, mm -hmm. and then you'll see them in the street and they'll be like, piss off, I'm having a bad day, don't <laughs> talk to me, and it's like. That, that's what confuses me and Stephen Bartlett is amazing because he's like I'll never be a dick he's awesome. he was like I'll, he was like I'll never be like that because my purpose was to actually help people so that when someone's coming to me that's that one moment that's going to reflect their perception of that person mm -hmm. and they're going to remember that mm -hmm. so it doesn't really matter that you're seeing like 300 people a day that are coming up to you if you're a dick to that person then you're kind of like going away from what your purpose was in the beginning one thing that I want to talk about is like how addictive social media is. I mean, I think I'm addicted. Are you? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I literally, I struggle to put my phone away for the whole day. Really? I do. I I've actually really do. good at it, to be fair. Really? Yeah. Okay, I tell, think tell just, me just because my focus and my passion is directed at something else. Mm. I'm, you won't really catch me sat around much, you know. On your phone. Chilling, not even, don't really watch Netflix. I'm just yeah, always same. very focused on my work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, but that's obviously true. prior to that, you could easily catch me, you know, chilling, just scrolling. scrolling. Well, it's true because I tried to DM you like five times, and you, I just I just didn't hear back for like <laughs> three hours. I was like, shit, Mira, I need I need to confirm this timing with you. But no, it's good. It's I'm actually very quick to be on my phone. And I think it's like the fear of like missing an opportunity. FOMO, right? Yeah. Well, exactly. You just call me out on it. Actually. Um, actually, that's really interesting. You said that. I maybe didn't have that, like reflection. I'm like, I don't get FOMO, but clearly I do because I have to check my phone. And I think that a lot of my work is done through Instagram. So for the podcast, reaching out to guests, finding the content, thinking of topics 
liaising with all the people mm -hmm. it is all done through instagram and then even in terms of the gift bags you know re like speaking to all the retailers speaking to all the suppliers so i am constantly on my phone but i think i use it as like an excuse to be like well that's why i'm allowed to have like 50 but your intentions are different my intentions are different but i do i still and think it's fueling your passion and your goals so okay fine you, you made me feel better you yeah. made me feel better but it seems like you're using it more for like networking and for sure know, progressing with your career for sure, because the thing is, the reason why I scroll on the content page is I always like to see like different things, right? So I've actually unfollowed a lot of negative people. I just think that if they're like a family friend or a relative, everyone has negative family friends and relatives, mm -hmm. let's be honest. If they are, I just mute their stories and mute their posts. I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to mm -hmm. see it at all. But if it's a random person, I've just unfollowed. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to see a negative yeah. image. Even after reading Stephen Bartlett's book, I don't know if you read it. I did a nice little cleanse, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, Were you scared people were going to be like, why did you want to follow me? Um, no, I wasn't really bothered, to be honest. I think there was one girl that was like, did you want to follow me? I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll follow you back. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need to do what's happening with my phone. I, got, I wasn't that phased. I'm following people. Yeah, I just, yeah, just decluttered a little bit, and I think that's healthy. I think you have to, like, you're evolving, you're growing as a person, you're following, you know, shouldn't stay static and the same for Absolutely. And like me, if you're addicted to being on your phone, I have to be very careful about who's on my feed, right? Mm -hmm. Addiction is seen as like such a bad thing, but actually, I'm, like you said, I'm using it for my work. Mm -hmm. So if I'm constantly on Instagram, if someone looked at my statistics, I'm obviously not going to get them up. But if someone looked at my usage on my phone, they'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> that's so bad. But it's not like I'm just sitting there stalking people's pictures just for the mm -hmm. fun of it. Yeah. I did, um, I asked a question on Instagram actually, and I said, what, what's your main purpose for using Instagram? And I answered I think that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was a varied you know varied variety of answers um a lot of people wanting to use it for their business which mm -hmm. i think this is the kind of direction we're transitioning in right now with exactly. personal brands um a lot of them said inspiration which is fair enough mm -hmm. good. we will get collective inspiration on there um if you're following the right people and also, I also don't follow the right people because I look for inspiration for outfits all the time. That's the mm. that, that's that's the bad bit. I guess it's outfits on the podcast, so like, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to keep justifying everything. For the <laughs> you are. You know, <laughs> food for the podcast, gym for the podcast, everything. <laughs> um, and the last one was, I don't know why it's an addiction. You know, mm. good question. I don't even know why I'm on it most of the time. So I think it really, you have to understand what your intentions are using it in the first place. What's hard though is if you're addicted to something and then you're using it to fuel your business, that's quite hard. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I was listening to um, a talk and this woman said that, you know, I have a baby and I love being with my baby. Oh my but what? <laughs> do you love babies? I feel like, oh, you're no, I do. I'm just like the story. Like, you're scared of the story. <laughs> okay, no, it's, 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 not, it's not a bad story. Nothing happens to the baby. <laughs> but basically, she says that she loves spending time with her baby and then on like a, she spends a whole weekend with her. And then on a Sunday night, when she's like breastfeeding her, she literally looks through Instagram and she's all her friends have gone out on the weekend, had drinks, gone out with their partners, had a crazy time, and she's like, I have FOMO. And I feel really sad. And she's like, at that moment, I feel really upset that I'm addicted to looking at my phone. Mm -hmm. Because if I wasn't, I just wouldn't care. Yeah. Like I would just be like, I don't need to look at my phone today. But it's almost like it's almost like a subconscious thing that we do. Yeah. You know, I've been like quite conscious about things that I do in autopilot. Like, when I go to the gym, I was picking the same locker for, like, six months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is weird. Like, I, I don't know why. I, was just I like, do it all the time. But, like, I just try now to, like, pick a different locker. And I'm, like, very conscious the fact that I'm picking a different locker. So that now... Breaking the habit. Yeah, I'm breaking the habits of things that I do in autopilot. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that Instagram is one of those things that you pick up your phone, like, constantly, just because it's a habit, not because mm -hmm. you need something from it, not because you're looking for something from it, not because you're looking for inspiration. All those positive things that we just spoke about... Yeah. Actually, it can just be like a habit to just look at it just to make you feel better because sure. it gives you that dopamine hit, mm -hmm. and that's the most addictive thing. It's like as addictive as when you take drugs, it's as it's harder actually to break a social media habit than it is to give up alcohol or to give up drugs. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I guess if you have access to it 24 7, it's, it's really hard, and I think. You know that story that you just mentioned your friend with the baby mm. and if she's feeling like that and she's actually in you know she's in a she must you know feel so grateful for being a family and like right, she's got everything going for her yeah but she feels like that so 
how does you know a young teenager feel that doesn't have many friends how does a young girl feel that's going through a lot of concerns with her body mm. um how does someone feel that's being bullied and has been pushed out of the group you know if it's so hard. someone in that position can feel like that then you know the effects are pretty detrimental to anyone that's in a different environment it's so true and like that's what i wanted to really talk to you about was you know social media and mental health you just can't distinguish between them two. They're just completely interlinked now. How do you think social media has affected people's mental health, or even yours? Um, I think it is. It's not. I think it's. It's not mental health. I think it's changed our personalities, our habits, our behaviour. Mm -hmm. Humanity's behaviour has completely been shaped by social media. And what way? Um, um, social media, a decade of it, using it, is ingrained in us into our habits. Like you said, you're in mm -hmm. pilot mode. Constantly. A lot of the time. AI is evolving, it's becoming smarter, it's mm -hmm. understanding who we are. So, in terms of mental health, um, I think it's like 87% of US Americans want social media companies to do something about the effects their products are having on mental health. Like, it's clearly an issue, everyone's aware of it, um, but I'm just worried that it's going to get to a point where it's kind of out of our control because mm -hmm. of. AI, um, the algorithm, you know, it's building itself and I think it's going to get to a point where we can't control it. When you say that we can't control it and like, it's so crazy, everyone's worried about it, mm -hmm. everyone's nervous about it, everyone keeps using it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's honestly mad. Like I would say, like I said, there's certain things that I've done to kind of filter out what I don't like and what I do like about social media. The podcast is like the best thing ever. I love having these conversations. I learn so much. So I love social media in that sense. Sometimes I compare myself to think I haven't grown that much. I don't have that many followers. But like in my heart, I think that it will pay off. Mm -hmm. So like that's my deeper belief. And this is like my manifestation technique of like thinking that like everything will be fine. But sometimes I think, well, why do I need the validation of more followers just to think that my podcast is great? Mm -hmm. Right? Like why, why do I need that validation? I truly believe that I'm having great conversations. So I don't need that validation, but it's very easy to get caught up in that because mm -hmm. when I DM a guest to say, hey, do you want to come on my podcast? And they don't reply, my aut my like automatic thought is like, it's because I have many mm -hmm. followers. I think people have a lot of pride in number of followers equals success, your value and success. And we've seen multiple times of people that have millions of followers that are suicidal, really not happy with life. And they're like, they're very open about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, uh, it's it's kind of sad that no one has kind of grasped that yet and we're still chasing this dream number. that just doesn't exist and yet it's a number. But I think Instagram have become aware of it. They're, they're hiding the likes gradually, right? Yeah, which is great. Which is great. I love that. Um, but I think right now, uh, because it, Instagram is so business focused, everything is business focused. Is yeah. Instagram the place where you just jump on and connect with your friends? Like, mm. it's not. No. And the number of followers you have equals the amount of money that you can earn. Exactly. That's and you know I've been reading now that it's actually become like a shopping platform. Mm -hmm. So they want it. So TikTok is going to apparently become like YouTube. So mm -hmm. they're like extending the amount of time that they're posting, uh, that you can post. And then Instagram is going to become a bit like a shopping platform. So whenever you want to yeah, buy market something, things, yeah. marketplace. So whenever you want to buy something, you just go on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it it's, already is now. Like if I want some interior inspo or like you said fashion, you want to yeah. check it out. Like everything's tagged. I kind of feel like sometimes. A lot of my, I, I don't do a lot of like influencer gifting, yeah. and so a lot of my posts are just like in my clothes, and I'm not tagging anything. I'm like, shit, is this okay? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have sworn. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, is this worthy of Instagram because I'm not tagging exactly. a designer outfit or something, you know? Exactly, and that's hard, isn't it? Because let's say you're the kind of girl who, well, okay, let me just rephrase that. You are the kind of girl that looks beautiful in anything. Oh, do you like? Do you then feel that like you have to wear something designer just to show like I can afford it? I think I own like one designer handbag. Yeah, which is like years old. It really doesn't face me. Um, but that's just me. And there yeah. are millions of other girls that do not think like that. And um, I think there's nothing wrong with wearing designer stuff. Like <laughs> I do like a nice clothes. But what I have a problem with is buying something for Instagram. Mm. So and the you, fast fashion is just exactly. unbelievable. Um, exactly. and we, yeah, I think a lot of female bloggers in that industry feel that pressure way more. I can't say I'm in it, so I don't fully understand, understand it, but I can understand if you, if I wanted to set up a fashion 
Instagram, I know mm. and I feel that I would have to constantly be purchasing or loaning or doing whatever Amazing. I can to get these designer tags in the feed. 100%. And you know what I find really shocking is that I see like 16 and 17 year olds, even like 22 year olds, like head to toe in designer. And I'm like, either your parents mm -hmm. are paying for that, Mm -hmm. Or you <clears throat> must be spending all your salary on that, and yeah. you're doing it literally to post on yeah. Instagram. And you can tell, you can tell, like when someone's like 22, 23, yeah. and they're and working their butt off at a full time job, and then they spend their whole month's salary on a pair of Balenciagas. And I'm like, why? And I think it's truly just for validation online, mm -hmm. and that's what we need to move away from. And I do remember this quote, guys. This is a quote I remember. Oh, wait, hold on, maybe. <laughs> Okay, it's it's by, um, oh my god, why is my memory so bad? It is by Einstein. Oh, yeah. Not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. Boom, I got it. I like it. Nice. <laughs> the reason, I, the reason I, I had that as my bio, so I should have bloody remembered it. I had it as my bio from when I was like 22 to 24, mm -hmm. so going through this like self development phrase, phase. Update my bio with a new quote every week. And what that really reminded me of is that like you could have 10 million followers and you could have no friends. Yeah. And you could have like 100 followers and mm -hmm. all those 100 followers could be your friends. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's quite sad. Mm. There are so many people I know that have so many followers and they have no friends in real life because mm. they're not a nice person. Mm. But they have a different identity online. They're portraying a different image. Mm. I'm, hel I'm helping the homeless and they're on their phone the whole time. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, I'm donating this much money to charity and they don't do shit. Mm -hmm. And it's just so hard to watch people like that. And like the worst thing is when someone's saying one thing online and you know them and you know they're not that way, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's what's so hard about social media is that they're constantly seeing a different version of someone and they're putting on that version just to be liked. I think this is just like the amateur stage. I think people are just getting started. I think when Metaverse kicks in, of oh the, God, the so online cool. identities that people are going to be creating, you know. So this is, we're never going to go back to true authenticity, I mm. think, on, so, on Instagram in particular. Um, I feel like the world has built up this expectation and um, everyone's aware of it. Like you said, everyone's been aware of it for so long, but nothing's been done. What does that say? You right. know? Um, and what do you think that we could do to be more authentic on Instagram? Or how do you think we could encourage people to be more authentic on Instagram? Yeah, so I've, I've consciously been trying to just not be on it so much. Mm -hmm. And when I am on it, um, maybe just try and have a bit of balance of not just scrolling, but actually engaging and talking yeah. to people that you admire. You know, send someone a message, check in, mm -hmm. get to know someone, mm -hmm. you know following like following like 900 people I literally don't even know majority of them like personally like it's all very surface level right right um I wish I did know them a little bit more but right. again it's what they present to you of them isn't it absolutely and in terms of how we think social media has changed our identity you've created this amazing app called my wave tell me a little bit about it and why it's so different from all the other apps out there and how it actually shows a true authentic version of you and you can't hide your identity. Mm -hmm. So when my wave, the idea was born, it was, you know, I was, it came through a need of my own. I was on Instagram scrolling as you do. Uh, this moment, yeah, this is like a couple of years back. Um, and this guy was posting and I was very quick to judge him. Um, right. And he posted something very vulnerable, very open, very spiritual, and I was like, wow, like, I thought this guy was a bit of a dick, but I was totally wrong. And he posted it by writing down his thoughts and uh, screenshotting it and then posting it as a picture. And mm -hmm. I was reading it out to my mum and my family. <laughs> I was Sorry. reading it out to my mum and my family. And um, I was like, I just wish I could have heard him say that. And this is kind of just mm. pre the rise of podcasts. Podcasts are about, but no one's really like, yes. you know, the past year or two, people have really like, been everyone has a podcast. Yeah, yeah, literally. I need a podcast. You need one. <laughs> I'm so you one. can record here with me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and at the time, you know, there's no social audio. There's no such thing as social mm. audio. You know, Clubhouse made a great introduction, <laughs> got people familiar with it, talking yes. and, you know, live in conversations. And their timing was, you know, impeccable. Point. Yeah, I was on it every night, every single night. Yeah. But now it's died down. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And um, so I was kind of going through a personal development journey of my own, and I realised that this social media platform is not 
up to par and it's not reflecting where I am in life right now. Right. It was fueling the insecurities in me, mm-hmm. but as I grew as a person, it just wasn't fulfilling me at all. And um, I guess there's loads of different elements. Like I've been judged a lot based on what I look like growing up, skin color, career, um, even just being a woman, like people mm-hmm. are just so quick to make assumptions. Um, so I, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna strip back, you know, the image. Let's get rid of that. Let's really just get to know people for who they really are. Right. Um, so that's why it was audio focused in the first place. There's no filters on my wave. So there's a lot of social audio apps where you can make yourself sound like a chipmunk and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh. really? Yeah. It's you just, can change your voice. Yeah. I think wow. Facebook, um, their audio rooms that you can change your voice. And I'm like, I, I don't want to like tap into that at all. Like okay. your voice is so true to who you are. A hundred percent. And I think you can really see someone's energy in their voice. Mm. Like, I hear the emotion as well. Like there's one thing oh, people are like writing really long captions on Instagram, which is like awesome because they're telling a story, but it'd be so much nicer just to hear it. Yeah. And when you can hear like, if you close your eyes right now, I'm not going to ask you to do that, but people who are watching or listening, if you close your eyes right now, you can tell in my voice if I'm like smiling or if I'm angry. I don't think we realise how much power audio has. Mm-hmm. On Instagram, I can write a really long caption and say all these things I've copied and pasted from mm-hmm. Google. When I'm speaking, if only I believe it, then it will come out like authentically mm-hmm. and it will come out like nicely. Yeah. It will flow. And I wanted to tap into actually, like you said, how's my way different from social media platforms. If you were to go on Instagram for an hour, mm-hmm. you are, like the amount of screen time that you have on there, you know, you're scrolling, what value do you get from that? Right. There's such a huge benefit of audio, right? I can just put my phone down, listen to it on the go. So it's adapting to people with busy lifestyles, which we all have now. Yes, you know? we do. No one's just sat around all day. We're not still in lockdown. Mm-hmm. Um, so the power of audio, again, it was driven to help us stay productive. I never wanted my wave for people to be on it all day, every day. Yes. It's supposed to be time of reflection, a time to give advice, share some knowledge, connect mm. with someone that's, you know, on your same wave. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. So I, like that. I think all of the things that I learned through my personal development journey, I just wanted to infuse in the user experience. So, you know, my intentions with my wave was to never be addictive, ever. Right. And okay. um, I know it's called a social platform, um, but I really hope that it differentiates itself from other social platforms because you are connecting with people, but it's more than just a follow. Like, you like something because you love what you've heard, you right. love their mindset, and you've really connected with a life experience, for example. Mm-hmm. So um, I think the value that you get out of an audio podcast or, you know, social platform is much more beneficial. And why would someone go on to my way instead of just going on to the podcast app or Spotify? Mm-hmm. So um, podcasts are amazing. Uh, but they can be quite lengthy. <laughs> like this one as well. <laughs> um, so we really just wanted to find that really nice middle ground where you just capture the value in under five minutes. So it's kind of the bridge between, you know, social media, TikTok and podcast. So we're just that nice little... It's basically sweet TikToks spot. for basically to brighten your day and to make you feel mm-hmm. amazing and to empower you. Yeah, because I think like short podcasts clips. are amazing, but um, we're seeing a lot of... Uh, we post a podcast like the best bits on TikTok and stuff exactly. like that now so um, that was kind of where it came from it's like let's just capture the value and I think if you have five mm. minutes to really get out what you want to get across it's just much more beneficial to the person listening um, but podcasts are amazing like if you have the time which I do like I gradually listen to a podcast over a yeah. couple of days um, but then again if I wanted to listen to like 20 people that I really love and admire in under 10 minutes and I can do that as well. I think people love it when you see a podcast and it will tell you like three ways how to do this or like the mm-hmm. one quick tip that you could do this. And I started to make reels like that because I really think that's the way you're gonna like share that value really quickly mm-hmm. and people are really gonna absorb it. Like you said, listening to a podcast is great. We've talked about so many different things on here today and people can understand different elements of it and we've gone into like a very deep conversation. Mm-hmm. But there's so much we could talk about social media. You know, we can have this conversation for three hours if we wanted mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. But being on my wave, I think if you're getting those little snippets and they're very clear about what they're about, like it's very clear about what they're about, mm-hmm. then someone can just absorb that knowledge very quickly. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So what is your dream for, for my wave? Oh, wow. Um, very ambitious. Um, I, just, be. I think the way social media has 
altered human behaviour in a sense. I really want to be able to alter human behaviour as well, but for the better. Mm -hmm. um, I want people to, I want humanity to be able to connect with each other and connect within as well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, progress for all humans and f for everyone is to make progress in your life, to become more self-aware, to be more connected. Yeah. Uh, so that was always the intention. Um, and I love the idea that I could just tap in and just hear how people are across, like anywhere across the world. I could learn a language. I can mm. see what's happening in another country like right now. How is someone feeling? What they're going through? Can I help them? Can I relate? Um, and you can have that conversation <clears throat> directly with them. Um, you can do audio comments back, so it's kind of nice. yeah at that stage right now. Um, but so Amazing. many more exciting things we can include. But ultimately, I wanted to be a social platform for social good because we've got right. so many social media giants that are just like data data money money and it's just like what about a social platform that you've got millions and it's global and it's got huge presence and you know imagine if facebook like regularly donated charity and like yeah. helped with you know world disasters and people in need mm. that's what i want to do i want to bring everyone together so Social audio for social impact would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm so grateful to have this conversation with you. I think that you you've actually shown me a lot of things that I probably didn't think about before, and I'm sure people who are listening and watching this are going to feel so inspired by you. So thank you so much for coming on and being my first guest. Thank you so in much in the studio. Likewise, I mean, it was really nice to get to know you beneath the surface as well. You know, it's unlikely we would have connected this way just sure. through DMs. So. Thank you for inviting me. No, thank you for coming <laughs> and thank you for being part of Mind. Oh, thank you so much. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Wherever you're listening or watching, if you could press the like, follow and subscribe button, it would mean the world to me.